Hello, this is Sally from Launch Code, and we're back with another video on ASP.NET Core MVC and controllers. So we're going to continue working on our Hello ASP.NET application. So far, we've learned that controllers are the traffic cops of the application and that we can use them to pass information back and forth between views and models. Now, one way that we can pass information through controllers is by adding arguments to our action methods. And last time we learned how to add a new action method. So we are going to go ahead and do that again over here. And we are going to add a method called welcome. I also want to add a comment and I'm going to ask that welcome respond to a get request. Public. We will use the same I action result return type. And I'm going to call it welcome string name. So name is going to be our argument here for the welcome method. And I want it to return some HTML. And we're going to make use of that name argument in a moment here with h1. Welcome to my app. We use string concatenation. And then, oops, that needs to be an exclamation point. And then we'll give a closing tag here. We learned last time as well that when using content, we want to specify that this is HTML, so text slash HTML. And there we go. Now we haven't added any attributes, so we're going to use conventional routing with the welcome method at first, which means this needs to respond to a route that looks something like hello slash welcome. All right, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to run my application and let's see what happens here. All right, it is up and running. So I'm going to navigate to the route slash hello slash welcome to see the result of my welcome method. It just says welcome to my app. Name has no value. It didn't receive a value from anywhere. And that is one of the main things we want to think about when working with controllers is where are the values coming from? Where's the data coming from? Is it going to come from a model, a view? In our case, we haven't worked with those things yet. So we are going to pass information to the welcome method through our routes. So the first way I'm going to do that is with a query string. If I click on the URL here, I'm going to start a query string at the end with just question mark. I'm going to use name. Name is the name of the argument that we are passing this to. We are passing it through the name parameter here equals Tilly. So if I hit return here, we can see that using a query string, we were able to pass the welcome method, a value for name. We gave it the value of Tilly and now it says, welcome to my app Tilly. All right. So now we've used a query string to pass the welcome method, a value of Tilly for name. We did have though that problem earlier when we didn't use a query string and name had no value. So let's go back to our code and we're going to make name an optional parameter, which means if name does not receive a value through the route, it is totally fine. Our page will still look great. We're going to give name a value to use as a default value. So let's head back over to visual studio here, stop the application and modify this welcome method just a little bit. So in the method signature, we're going to set the default value. I just want to say world. And I want to save my file and rerun the application. And now let's see what happens. There it is. I'm going to close my old tab. I'm going to close the old tab. 
slash hello slash welcome. Now we want to double check our old route here. Name equals Tilly. It still works. It didn't get the value world because we provided it a different value. We provided the value of Tilly. Now though, when I go to just slash hello slash welcome, welcome to my app world. So that certainly makes our page look a lot nicer by using that optional parameter. Now we want to go back to our code and we want to do the same thing we did last time, which is add some attributes and try out the attribute routing approach. So I want to go back, stop the application. And I want to add some attributes. I said in my comment above the method that I want this to respond to a get request. So HTTP get is the HTTP verb attribute to specify that this method needs to respond to get requests. And then I want to give it a route. So slash hello world slash welcome. And I need to do one more thing to make sure that we can pass name a value through a query string. So slash I'm going to use curly brackets here, our curly braces, and I am going to put name in curly braces. When we are writing our paths in this route attribute, if we enclose a value in curly braces, that means that we want to use the value of that variable, not the word name. So here, instead of going to slash hello world slash welcome slash name, we are saying we want to go to slash hello world slash welcome with the value of whatever name is holding. So that will enable us to pass name a value through our route using attribute routing. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, run it, and we're going to see what happens. Close the old tab, slash hello world, slash welcome. I want to use a query stream name equals Tilly. And it's not working. So we need to go back to our controller and see what happened here. Stop the application and let's talk about it. Before we said that we want name to be an optional parameter. That way, if name does not receive a value from the route from a query string, we can still display that beautiful page. Welcome to my app world. Adding curly braces around name in the path was not enough to designate it as an optional parameter, nor was it enough for us to simply give name a value in the method signature like we did with conventional routing. There's one more thing we need to add here, and that is a question mark. By adding that question mark, we are designating in the path in our attribute that name is optional. So both slash hello world slash welcome and slash hello world slash welcome with a query string will both work and display beautiful web pages. So let's hit run it. All right, I want to close the old tab slash hello world slash welcome. Welcome to my app world. It is back and question mark use the same query stream name equals Tilly. Welcome to my app Tilly. Amazing. Now we are passing action methods values through our routes. Let's go ahead and look back at the controller code for a second. Stop the application. So we are back at our controller and we are ready to check out another way that we could pass name a value using our route. We just used a query string, which is one part of the anatomy of a URL. Another part is the path, which precedes the query string. We can also use a path variable to do so. 
Half variables and query strings lie in two very different parts of a URL, which makes the two things quite different. And as you build larger and more complex applications, you're really going to start seeing the differences between path variables and query strings and the different use cases for both of those. But we're going to go ahead and rerun our application because the path here in our route attribute is going to make it possible for us to use a path variable to pass name a value just as we did with a query string. That is because both query strings and path variables are what we call route parameters. So I'm going to run our application and while it's running route parameters are ways for us to pass controllers and action methods information directly from the routes. So we're going to go to the route slash hello world slash welcome. And instead of question mark name equals Tilly, you making use of that query string, we're going to add a new end to our URL here. And we're going to continue the path with a slash Tilly. By doing so, we are giving name the value of Tilly, making name a path variable here. Welcome to my app, Tilly. All right. So here it is. Welcome to my app, Tilly. We've made the name argument of the welcome method an optional parameter. We've given it a default value. We've passed it a value through a query string, and now we have passed it a value through a path variable. So amazing job, everyone, and we will see you in the next video.